Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechach Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the saints, the Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere salutations, as always, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. As well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrew Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And uh, this is part two of the epistle that I did earlier entitled um, Believe for the Very Work's Sake. And I'm going to go back to the precept that, um, that uh, through the Spirit inspired me to do this epistle. So this is the book of St. John, chapter 14. And I'm going to pick up at uh, verse. All right. Verse 10. So St. John chapter 14, verse 10, and it reads, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. All right? So right here, I, this is also our Lord, and uh, if I didn't say it already, this is our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashayak speaking, whom the Lord only calls Jesus Christ. All right? Now, right here, the Lord Yahweh Shai, he's telling us that, you know, believe for the very work's sake because in real time amongst the true biblical hebrew israelites the so-called negroes latinos and native americans as well as the speckled bird hebrew israelite foreigners what other uh philosophy or uh work has has had these benefits what other work or philosophy has brought about this change among any amount of um so-called negroes latinos or native americans these are the questions you have to ask yourself. If you have a problem understanding uh, deeper breakdowns and stuff like that, okay, cool, fine. That's simple, understandable. But the Lord is all, the Lord always makes a way for his people to come back unto him, all right? This is how we always had a remnant in every generation, all right? Whether it, whether it was in the time of our forefather Abraham, okay, whether it was during the... Um, during the famine that was in, I believe it was in the Northern Kingdom in Samaria. All right. And, um, hmm, sloppy. Ahab and Jezebel had uh, slain the prophets. And the prophet Elijah, he thought, he's prayed to the Heavenly Father and said, well, let me just go ahead and get the account. Uh, Romans chapter 11. Okay. Romans chapter 11, starting in verse 1. And it reads, uh, something that says Israel is not cast away and this is in the New Testament for all of you daggone God loves the whole world bug outs and trying to use replacement theology to say that the Heavenly Father um, try to say the Heavenly Father he uh, did away with Israel and that is spiritual Israel and anybody can be a, a Israelite all that bullshit but verse 1 I say then hath the Most High cast away his people most high forbid for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin and that's the proper you and that's the proper way you break down Abraham. All right. It's not you sitting by and um, what's the word? Yeah, it's not you sitting by and trying to use Abraham to co basically try to co-op Abraham to say that all nations can be saved or so whatever bull crap you said or well, because all nations didn't come out of Abraham. You know, obviously. But anyway, verse two, the most high hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Won't ye not what the scripture saith of Elijah, how he maketh intercession to the Most High against Yahshua Allah, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Verse 4, but what saith the answer of the Most High unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also... There is a remnant according to the election of grace. So right here, this lets you know that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, 
he he's not he's not a human okay he's not bound by um by mortal limitations so the same way like so like not the same way but in the way or in the manner that a man of the flesh a mortal man a natural man so to speak a carnal man would do something and then you know struggling to figure out how to undo what they did and when they realize oh i made a mistake the heavenly father he's not he's not bound by that if the heavenly father does something the heavenly, everything happens in the will of the heavenly father and everything plays out perfectly the heavenly father didn't make israel to sin on purpose and make no way for us to come back all right that's these that's what these bugged out christians don't understand so when you have these Dumbass Edomites walking up to the brothers' camps talking about uh, John 3.16, John 3.16, like all this damn stupid repetitive crap, this same dumbass rhetoric that hasn't done anything but destroy our people further and further and keep us destroyed. But when the true men of the Lord, raised up by the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, started with our elders and apostles of Great Millstone and the Archimon done to teach the likewise doctrine, tell you the true doctrine, you buck up against it. Because all like Elder Apostle Zahar constantly always says, you're not of the elect. All right, the elect will get this, but if you're not of the elect, you're not going to get this. But anyway, let me go ahead and prove uh, what I just said with the other scripture. This is the book of, um, what was that? I was about to get Romans. I believe it was Romans. Romans chapter. Let me go nine. Romans chapter nine. All right. All right, this is a good, uh, I'm going to start right here to get a point. Romans chapter 9, okay. I'm going to get verse 6, and it reads, Not as though the word of the Most High taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Now, before a dumbass Christian hops on a comment board saying something stupid, not necessarily my comment board, but any of the any of the Occam's comment board saying something stupid, do you have to keep reading to get line upon line precept upon precept verse 7 neither because they are the seed of abraham are they all children but an isaac shall thy seed be called and you see these uh these bugged out christians and these weirdos they like to neglect that particular verse in a precept because it's letting you know right here this isn't this also does not cast away israel all right because this is telling you what Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Why is that? Our forefather Abraham, he had eight children. Okay? Isaac is the most known as well as Ishmael and Midian, but there were five others. Okay? That came out of Keturah. Midian was one of the Midian was the most known one that came out of Keturah and the father of the Midianites. But the point is, and Isaac the seed was called. And then from our forefather Isaac, okay, he had his two twin sons, Esau and Jacob. And our forefather Jacob, the younger twin, he was called. So that lets you know right there. The scriptures are consistent. You just don't got it because you don't have the Rechak with Dash. All right. Um, what else we have right here? Verse 8. And it reads, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Okay? Now, once again, the Heavenly Father, he's narrowing this stuff down. Alright? The this wouldn't this breaking down the precepts that's inside the Holy Bible like this would not be possible if we were still stuck in plantation Christianity or Islam or Judaism or any of these other false ways that Esau even the self-proclaimed so-called white man pushes out. All right. This is believing for the very work's sake. All right. Nobody who Yahweh Bashmi and Shots put the spirit on is going to struggle with these concepts. Now, there's more meat scriptures in the Bible that you may need a teacher or you may need the apostles or the elders it's a lot to help you get certain understandings on but ultimately the elect is going to receive this anyway all right once you once you get once you get the breakdown you will receive it you're not going to get offended in yahweh shah or the heavenly father yahweh all right verse 11 for the children being not yet born neither having done good any good or evil that the purpose of the most high according to election might stand not of works but of him that calleth it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What then shall we say there is unrighteousness with the Most High? Most High forbid. 
For he saith unto Masha, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that sheweth mercy. Right, because the Lord, he didn't show Esau any mercy. He did not make Esau to receive mercy. He despises Esau. All right, he loves Jacob. He didn't make Jacob to be in a mortal body forever and, and being subject to captivities and subject to payments under these dirty heathen and, you know, not ruling the creation that that he made. All right, that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi Shah had made, all right, using the Alahayim under Yahweh Shah, under uh, Yahweh Shah's supervision, Alahayim being the first fruit spirits. All right, the 144,000 mighty men that are listed in the book of Revelation. All right, this is when they were in their angelic estate along with our Lord Yahweh Shah. And I don't want to be of that elect number, but the point is. <laughs> The point right here is if the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans and speckled bird were not the Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speaks of, how come the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the speckled bird that subscribe to the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, how come they're the only Israelites? How come they're the only men on the planet that can properly break down these precepts and they fit the blessings and the curses spoken of in the book? No other nation fits this. <clears throat> no other nation, even if they tried to do this, would look, sound, or feel authentic doing what the heaven, what's like it, what the heavenly Father Yahweh Bashem Shah put the spirit on us to do. No other person can claim that they're from any of the twelve tribes, and that be backed up by the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Shah bearing witness unto them. Because it's easy to say I'm the chosen people. When I'm when you reaping in all the blessings, but not so much so when it comes to the curses. The so-called white man, Esau Edom, the devil that the Bible speaks of, all right, the physical incarnation of the spiritual demon Satan, that entire nation of people do not fit the blessings or the curses. Why is that? Let me go ahead and get the blessings real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and prove something else. Let me get the book of Leviticus. Chapter 26. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And here it goes blessings of obedience. Right? Verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord Yahweh Alahayaka. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord Yahweh Alahayaka. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. All right. Verse three. If ye walk in my statutes, and statutes is just a fancy way of saying, you know, the customs and the traditions that we were given by the Heavenly Father from on high, and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees shall yield the fruit. Salakia, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Got ahead of myself, Salakia. Verse five. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. All right. And I will give you peace. So I can I will give peace in the land and ye shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. And I'm stopping right there because the point right there that I needed is, has been made. These are the blessings for obeying the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Not just the blessings of claiming, oh, I'm an Israelite. I'm the people, of, we're the people of the Bible. We're the Jews. I'm not doing that. All right? Th that's not that's not what this is about. Salakia, not me. Not just me, Salakia. But the true elders and apostles of great, the uh, elders and apostles of great millstone and the Archimedes that teach the likewise doctrine, the true men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the true biblical Hebrew Israelites are not doing that. We're not just saying, oh, we're blessed because we did. No. We got a job to do. When you get the history, we got a whole history of going off against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? We have it where the Lord gave us a covenant. We broke it countless times, went into captivity, cried unto the Lord, and he redeemed us out of captivity. And then Jake went off again after the Lord gave us a judge that delivered us. 
Jake sinned again against Yahweh Ba Sham Yahweh Shah. So keeping that in mind, you'll realize that it goes deeper than just saying we're the people like uh, Amalek is doing over in, the, in, uh, in our holy land, claiming it be us. But what's happening now? Amalek is afraid to claim that he's a so-called uh, you wish person. All right, now they're complaining about how they got to take their little, the small hats off and put on regular baseball caps and get into these cabs and not, quote unquote, and speak what they call, quote unquote, Hebrew, you know? That's not, that doesn't match the blessings. That doesn't match the blessings. Now, are they still in their blessing? Yes, but it's failing. They on the, they on, you know, they fail, they blessing is circling the drain right along with the empire, which is Babylon the Great, the U.S. of A. All right. So that being said, they're blessed. Yeah, they do have money. They they do run everything, and they get so offended when you point out that they run everything that they want to cut channels, they want to censor you, they want to condemn you, they uh they say that you speak in hate speech, that you're anti simp, you know, all this other type of bull crap. So that's not that also doesn't fit the blessings of, of the Israelites in the last days, nor the curses because it, in the curses it says that. We would be an astonishment of proverb and a byword among all nations. All right, it wouldn't. It didn't say anything about us having an entire defense league to come to our defense when other nations call us mean names and all this other baby crap Esau's on, you know. And as far as the blessings, yeah, they are blessed. As far as you know, having money, resources, controlling everything, uh, controlling all the banks. All right, but it's not done in righteousness. It's not. It's not done because they're reverencing Yahweh Bashem El Shai sanctuary. They over there call them on Hashem, which just means the name. The name of what? They over there having, uh, what is that? Uh, Tel Aviv, which is called the most alphabet place on the planet. They giving uh, uh, infants oral circumcision, which is some bugged out crap that is not in the Holy Scriptures. That's in the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud, which they follow that. They don't follow Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. They have their heads covered, which you're not supposed to do when you're preaching or prophesying, all right? They're not wearing uh, uh, the garments down to the foot with the fringes and the border of blue. And they're in the Holy Land. What's stopping you from wearing the, the, the traditional garments? Just to name some things that made some points that may get missed, but let me go on to the point. But the children of Israel in the land of our captivity, we doing that. Now, let me go ahead and prove that with a quick precept, all right? The book of Revelations, chapter, uh, what is that, chapter 11? All right. All right. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And it reads, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of the Most High, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, so like it, but the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure. So lucky. I'm, I'm getting confused with all the, uh, the numbers right here. Revelation chapter 11, verse 2, and it reads, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city, and they tread underfoot. So lucky. And they, the holy city, so lucky. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Okay? Verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Who are these two witnesses? Northern kingdom and southern kingdom of Israel. All 12 tribes. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. In the land of their captivity, Babylon the Great. All right? And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Let's get the word clothed. It's the Greek word Strong's G4016. And it's per ebalo. Thayer's definition to throw around, to put around, to surround the city with a bank. That's definition one, palisade. Uh, definition B, of garments, to clothe one, to put a thing on one, to clothe one with a thing, to put on one's clothes oneself. Right, so who do you see wearing the righteous garments? The fringes with the ribbon and the border blue down to the foot. All right, not a t-shirt fringe. The men of great millstone. And the Akim that teach the likewise doctrine, such as men of valor, S O Y W Y, all right. Uh, I believe prophets of Babylon and some other uh, brothers who, I'm, who I may not be remember, uh, who I may not remember right now, Salakia. But the point is, all right, the true 
biblical Hebrew Israelites would fulfill this prophecy and righteousness. Now, they wouldn't just be out there just wearing the fringes saying we're that. No, they're going to preach and prophesy the correct doctrine, the correct uh, prophecies. They're not going to put their own spin on it. They're not going to come with emotions. They're going to preach it the way Yahweh Bashmiel Shah wants it preached. Okay. And what do uh, these weak ass Edomites and these two thirds simps and nigga women say? Oh, yeah, these niggas wearing dresses. No, nigga, your fucking favorite rapper wears a dress and probably so do you anyway. You know, that's the spirit of a lot of these weak, you know, gainsayers try to come in. But the Lord, he already said, all right, what did our Lord Yahweh Shah say? I'll get it right here so I can hold the other priests up. What did our Lord Yahweh Shah say about that? Luke chapter 21, verse 15, and it reads, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So that's why, you know, these weak ass Edomites can't say anything besides you guys are wearing this and that. You guys are wearing dresses like that bug out that walked up to the brothers camp in uh, GMS Orlando. You know, that weak Edomite coming with that same bull crap about all nations can be saved. No, nigga, you going into captivity. All right. The Lord never said anything about saving no damn heathen. What the hell does he what the hell does he need you for? He doesn't need you for anything other than serve his children. That's it. That's what you were made for. You wasn't made to be a ruler. That shit done went to your head, man. You done went Tony Montana. Esau done snorted, you know, too much sugar, and now he feels like he was born to be a king. No, bro. This is a trial period. And now that you, you outlived your usefulness, now comes for you. Now comes the time for you to serve in your true lot, which is slavery, along with your little heathen buddies. All right? Now let me get back to the uh, other part right here clothed in sackcloth and let's get sackcloth real quick oh uh, it's the greek word strong g 46 it's like a 45 26 sakos there's definition a sack a receptacle for holding or carrying various things as food it's like as money food etc a coarse cloth a dark coarse stuff made especially from the hair of animals a garment of the like material and clinging to the person like a sack which was want to be worn or drawn over the tunic instead of the cloak or mantle by mourners, penitents, suppliants, and also by those who, like the Hebrew prophets, lead an austere life. Call halagim la yahawah bashim because this a suffering and this affliction, the Lord, in this suffering and this affliction, the Lord gives us the comfort of realizing that this is for a greater glory. Just like our Lord Yahweh Shah, our Lord had to suffer before he was returned to his full glory on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Before he had the ability to open up the seven seals thereof in the book. Spoken about in the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter. Alright. So the all these things are happening because the children of Israel have received the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Rakhakwadash from on high from Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. Our Lord Yahweh Shah, when he was crucified for our sins and he went on that cross. Alright. And then he um, he he basically was raised up and returned to the right hand side of the heavenly father. He brought down the Rakhak with Dash. So now we don't need a physical temple. We don't need a high priest from the tribe of Levi after the order of Aaron. We don't need the Ark of the Covenant because our Lord, he is our high priest. He is our Ark of the Covenant. And as he said, all right, let me get this real quick. One greater than the temple. Yep. Why do you help me on shot? The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse. I'm going to start at verse 1 from the top. And it reads At that time, Yahweh Shah went on the Sabbath day. And, you know, through the Spirit, it's the Sabbath day right now. Uh, through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, Thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Verse 3. But he said unto them, and this is Ray Lettuce was Lord Yahweh Shah speaking. Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of the Most High, and did eat the shoe bread which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Right? Our Lord Yahweh Shah, he's greater than the temple. So because he's that he's our mediator and high priest and way back to the Heavenly Father, 
in the heavens, all right, in the true heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly tabernacle that the um the physical one was modeled after, all right. He is the one that makes it where we don't have to go to the temple in Jerusalem to worship because the heathens they used to sack our temple and destroy it because they knew that was our place of so like our place of worship. And if we couldn't keep our laws perfectly, then that would cut us off from our power. All right. But through, through Lord Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, this is why we can have these small sanctuaries. Okay, and I'm going to get that precept in a minute. Uh, let me see what else I got right here. Verse 7. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. Verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Right, because right now it's the Shabbat. You know, it's the Sabbath. So a lot of brothers had to work. All right, so... Do that, does that mean the Lord's going to put us to death? No, because we're under the, the we're not under law. We're under grace. That doesn't mean we break the law on purpose. Now, if a brother can help it, then yeah, it would be it would be in your best interest to take off for Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. All right. But we're in the land of our captivity, made subject unto payments. And the Lord, He wants us to use this world as not abusing it. So, Lord Yahweh Shai, once again, this is how Yahweh Shai. He's our mediator, high priest, and our intercessor to the heavenly Father Yahweh. So he can make intercession for our sins, for the sins, for, you know, for the laws that we can't fully keep. All right. For the sins we commit in ignorance. Lord, Yahweh Shai, he's covering us on that. But we have to really uh, we can't abuse that. We have to do it with um, meekness and humility, with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. All right. And we got to seek the Lord 10 times more. But uh, the main point, the reason why I got this precept was because our Lord, he's greater than the temple. So through Yahweh Shai's authority. All right. The children of Israel, all 12 tribes, are not only able to worship him without being in the temple of Jerusalem and we're able to rehearse the righteous acts, as well as the simple fact of all 12 tribes, the men of all 12 tribes are now eligible to be priests, not after the Levitical priesthood, but after the order of Melchizedek, which the scriptures tell you is the more superior priesthood. All right. Because Yahweh Shai, he is Melchizedek, Malak Tazadok, the king of righteousness, if you can receive it. Now... I think the next precept I had was the book of Matthew, chapter 18. Mm, it's locky. And I think I had it at verse uh, 16. No, here it goes. Matthew, chapter 18, verse 18. And this Lord Yahweh Shah speaking once again. And it reads, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, right? Because the true men of Yahweh Bashem Yah Shah, they have spiritual authority. All right, and this is why when this is why when brothers tell bugged out Jakes or out of order women in the congregation or uh, uh you know, basically tell, telling Jake when they get out of order, keep thy foot when I go to the house of the Most High. It's for this reason, you know. We we only thing we can do is warn you. But Yahweh Bash Myon Shah, he's going to be the one that judges you. He may send an evil angel your way that may manifest in the form of uh, a, a demon. Salaki. Like he may send an evil angel your way that may manifest in the form of a crazy ex or something like that. Or, you know, it finds out where you live. And the next thing you know, well, we, well you've seen what happened to Eve. All right. We already seen what happened to Eve who got judged by that uh by that ex of hers and he you know she said i got a restraining order and then he was all like i don't care about no damn restraining order then he just aired her out so you know it, the heavenly father he can do anything he wants to do man it's nothing for the heavenly father to send an evil angel your way and then just you know delete you for whatever reason you may think it's small you may be sitting there all oh, those those niggas on the corner okay cool next thing you know the lord he's sending somebody your way that's going to strike terror in your heart and it's going to be too late for you to repent this is going to be the lord calling you back home to the spirit world but reading on, verse 20, and here's the point for Salakia. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, and Lord Yahweh shall speak once again, and it reads, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, Salakia, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Who's Yahweh Shah's Father? The Heavenly Father Yahweh, the Ancient of Days, Allah Shadia. All right? Verse 20, and here's the point. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. It's like there am I in the midst of them. So right there, that's the point. So anywhere that the true believers of Yahweh Bash Me Shah gather, whether it's uh it's, if it's two or more brothers, all right, sometimes it's even one brother, because you know you got brothers that do camps by themselves, all right. 
the Lord is dealing with them. That's the Lord right there. That's the church. I believe it's the Greek word uh, ekklesia, which, means, which gets into a gathering of the Israelites. That's where you get the word church from. All right. But all this is happening through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. All right. The, the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are out on the highways and the hedges, making themselves a spectacle for Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai's sake through the foolishness of preaching to save them, which believe, roughly paraphrasing. Now, that wasn't happening under uh, uh, these other false philosophies Christianity, Islam, Judaism, uh, African goddess worship, all that bullshit, the Orishas, Santeria, uh, Brujeria. Full Dune, all that bull crap. It wasn't that wasn't getting it. That wasn't cutting the mustard. Alright. But Yahweh Bashmi Al Shaba putting his spirit on the service of the prophets. Here we are. You got the so-called Negroes, Latinos waking up. Alright. They're not going by the powers of being Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which was given to them by their enemy who enslaved them. Now back to the precepts to get into the blessings. Leviticus chapter 26. I'm going to get into the curses right here. All right. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14, and it reads, Penalties for disobedience. But if ye will not hearken unto me and, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul shall abhor my judgment, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but break that ye, so like, but that ye break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if you will not yet hearken for all this unto me, then will I punish you seven times more for your sins. So right here, verse 19, and I will break the pride of your power and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. Okay. And your strength shall be spent in vain for your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if you can, it's so like, and if you walk contrary unto me, I will not hearken. It's so like, and will not hearken unto me. I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. So there you go. The, the, the people that's pretending to be the, the Israelites, all right, Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed so-called white men, they not being punished for the for the sins against Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. Hell, Esau has started his entire kingdom. Upon wickedness, upon doing everything your Bosh Mel Shah says not to do according to his holy word. And he portrays himself as being holy and being the people, so no so all these bugged out jakes and these heathen that are under his witchcraft don't even think to study. So right there, the true men of the Lord, they do this. We do this through the spirit and power of your how Bosh Mel Shah. We understand that, look, you got to match the blessings and the curses to be the true children. And you got to repent, turn back to your Yahweh Bashmi Shah, rehearse the righteous acts, preach the kingdom of heaven, all right? Endure constant afflictions and become all things for the elect's sake. And give diligence to make your call and election sure. You got to have the faith. And most of all, you got to be an Israelite that has the faith. Because this covenant wasn't given to the Edomites. Now, let me get this precept real quick. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 1. This is one of my favorites, and it reads, There are also, so like these are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. And here's the point, verse 2. It is the glory of the Most High, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search out a matter. And who's doing that? Our apostle knows the great millstone and the Akimon down that teach the likewise doctrine, all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, Basham Rechakwadash. While these goofy ass Christians are just taking these English words at face value from a book that was translated from Hebrew. Let that sink in. Let me go ahead and get searched out. And we have the Hebrew word. We have the Cha, the Qua, and the Ra. So, Chakwar, outline of biblical usage to search, to search, search for, search out, examine, investigate. Search for, search through, explore, to examine thoroughly, to be searched out, be found, be ascertained, be examined. 
to search out, seek out. And who else is doing that but the men of Great Millstone and the men on down that teach the likewise doctrine? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bosh Shot. No one else. And if they are, they doing it and they withholding the true gospel from you and preaching their own gospel for filthy lucre's sake or for some other wicked ass purpose. Now let me get this precept right here. Our Lord Yahweh Shah himself said this. Matthew. Sometimes I forget this one. I believe I believe it's Matthew chapter 20. Where's the one with the woman? Is it Matthew 22? Well, I'll do it like this just to make it a little more simpler. It may be Matthew 10. It's lock like it. Matthew, Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Why do you help us me? I'll shy. Uh, let me see. I'll start at verse 21, and it reads, this is the Syrophoenician woman who was an Israelite, but, you know, she was raised in healing customs, keeping healing customs. Uh... Then Yahweh Shah went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidon. All right, that's the homeland of the Zidonians, which are Canaanites. Verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. Verse 24. But he answered and said, and here's the point. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right. This is Lord Yahweh Shah speaking. Red letter. Verse 25. Then she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Why did he call her a dog? All right. Because he's not dealing with the heathen. Nor was he dealing with Israelites that were uh, taken to the heathen customs. All right, which is why he told his uh, disciples, go not to the way of the Gentiles and unto any city that the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, because this doctrine was for repentant Israelites. But here's what happened. Verse 27. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Verse 28. Then Yahweh Shah answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now, why did that happen? Because that woman and her daughter were both Israelites. Now, before somebody bugs out and say, oh, well, you see, it goes through the line of the mother. Because No, nigga. That means that the child would have had to have a father who was an Israelite, even though he was not mentioned. Line upon line, precept upon precept. And the Lord didn't come to do with the law of the prophets. And the woman herself was an Israelite. Okay. She was just an Israelite, more than likely keeping Canaanite customs because Tyre and Zidon, all right, that was the homeland of the Zidonians, which was the, um, the descendants of the firstborn son of Canaan. Now, the, the main point was our Lord was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And you're not a lost sheep just because, well, I'll put it like this. The lost sheep that get saved are not going to be every single Israelite that's scattered in the captivity. It's going to be the ones that hear the word and repent, not just the ones that hear the word, Okay. Now the point is he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now let me go ahead and get this real quick. All right. Let me go John chapter 17. And verse 6 and it reads where let the lord yahweh shall speak once again i have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest which thou gavest me out of the world thine they were and thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word and now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee for i have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have known surely that i came out from thee and they believed Fucking, they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Okay? And all mine are thine, and all thine are mine. I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Okay? 
then this meant that we be, this means that our Lord Yahweh Shah, he was praying that the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, he make he uh keeps us in this faith so that we can be on one accord with the Heavenly Father Yahweh, just like our Lord Yahweh Shah is, which is why the scriptures call him the author and finisher of our faith. All right. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. What is that name? The name of Yahweh. Okay. It was only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, our Lord and Savior, and way back to the Heavenly Father. And he's still keeping us with the Heavenly Father. Adam Zah, we endure to the end. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, how, how can you apply that to these days? Because today is not just going to be just one Judas. It's going to it's going to be a bunch of bug out niggas that get called into the truth. And the Lord puts the spirit on them to get to fall out, to uh, to transgress, just like Judas did, in a number of different ways. And that's terrifying because the Lord even did that with King Saul. He let him prophesy amongst the prophets and then he basically took the spirit off of him and replaced it with a wicked spirit. So if anybody gets lost, this is Lord Yahweh Shah letting you know that it's because that was their condemnation. They were never of the elect. It was just their lot to be a part of the truth, you know, to be to fall out and become a demon and get that greater condemnation. Now back to the works, Jeremiah, back to something else to believe for the works sake, Jeremiah chapter 50, all right, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33, and it reads, Thus said the Lord Yahweh Tazabah Wath, the children of Israel, northern kingdom, and the children of Judah, southern kingdom, were oppressed together, all twelve tribes. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Northern Kingdom was brought over here to the Americas, all right, from the Assyrian captivity. All right, you can get that in the book of Second Ezra. And I believe that's, um, it's been a while since I got this. It's probably been like a few weeks. Let me see. The Ten Tribes. And this goes to show that the Lord blinded niggas, man, because it's simple. You type in Ten Tribes in the Apocrypha, and this is the, the first scripture you get. Second Ezra chapter 13. Verse. I'm gonna start at verse 39. And whereas, so like it, and whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, verse 40, here's the point. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away out of their own land in the time of Osea, the king, whom Solomon Nasser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. Verse 41, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, all right, and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might, sorry, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the, the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river, for the Most High then shoot signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsareth. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. The highest shall stay the springs of the stream again that they may go through. Therefore sawest thou the peace, like the multitude with peace. But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. That lets you know the northern kingdom is indeed the so-called Latinos and Native Americans, all right? In that uh, journey, that where it says the journey was, let me get that real quick, namely of a year and a half, you can get that same account in the book of First Kings, with uh, King Solomon sending his uh, his navy over with the Zidonians over to the Americas to receive, to get gold and peacocks and all these other things, man. It's America. Esau didn't know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Esau tell you he started civilization, man, get out of here. America was a new thing to, to the Edomites, but Jake already knew about it. So this is for you, uh, you know, for these bug outs that keep trying to talk about the northern kingdom isn't Israelites. Because right here, what I just read proves that the men, women, and children you see on this 12 tribe sign, starting from Simeon, Zebulon, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Asher, and Issachar are indeed Israelites. 
we already know Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, Southern Kingdom. You know, that's the first um, place people go when it comes to these curses. We already know that we were taking here on the cargo slave ships from the coast of, uh, of Africa, the land of Ham. Southern Kingdom being Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33, and it reads, Thus said the Lord Yahweh Tazabawath, the children of Israel, northern kingdom, and the children of Judah, southern kingdom, were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Because right here, in this day, we still in our captivity, all right? And even if you somehow leave the country, if you become a citizen, you can't stay gone for a certain amount of time. And even then, they're not giving you the land of Israel back. So your captivity, yeah, it's Babylon the Great is the capital of your captivity, but this whole entire planet is your captivity until Esau is taken out of power, until Lord Yahweh returns and, and destroys this fucking kingdom. Verse 34, their redeemer is strong. The Lord Yahweh Tazabawath is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the quiet so I can rest of the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Now, when was the northern kingdom enslaved in Babylon? They weren't. I just read the precept. The northern kingdom was in the Assyrian captivity. Southern kingdom, shortly thereafter, went into the Neo-Babylonian captivity. All right? So this is talking about Babylon the Great, the U.S. of A, America. Verse 35. A sword is upon the Chaldeans. The modern-day Chaldeans are these Edomites that are practicing the same witchcraft that the Chaldeans of Babylon practice, as well as the Egyptians and the Canaanites and so forth and so on. Said the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men, a sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. Because America is what? The great melting pot. Got people of all different actual bloodline nationalities, not just, oh, I claim this culture. No. You got Moabites, Ammonites, Hamites, Elamites, Japhites, all right, of course, the 12 tribes of Israel here in captivity. You got the Edomites running the whole thing. You even got Ishmaelites over here, a melting pot. What do, what do these people do when they come in? They try to be American. Some keep, you know, the heathen, most of the heathen keep their customs, but still, they Americanize themselves down to fit in in society. Reading on. And, all, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her, and they shall become as women, because it's going to be a terrifying time in Jacob's trouble in the day of the Lord. A sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. A draught is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, for it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. And we know the Heavenly Father hates idolatry, and Esau pushes that heavy. And these precepts are easy to understand all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Well, Salak, I'll put it like this. Easy to receive. Because even if you don't fully understand it, you receive it. And the Lord puts the spirit on you to study. And then he reveals these things to you uh, through faith and through favor on your life. Now, let me go ahead and get this last precept. And I'm going to wrap it up. The book of Matthew chapter 13. Verse 10. And the substance says an explanation. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whomsoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whomsoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore I speak, so I could, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For this people's heart, meaning their mind, is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and have clo and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should hear with their so like they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, their mind, and should be converted and I should heal them. The Lord doesn't want to heal these two-third niggas, man. They're they going to keep thinking that white boy Jesus is coming to save everybody and also the bull crap and then get deleted along with Esau, Edom. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Now let's get this word mystery real quick so Jake can realize just how much of a low level they on when they keep talking about all this but well, so lucky they're not going to realize it. But so the elect can realize how much of a low level these weak ass Christians and these Christian Israelites are on when they keep talking all this John 3 16 out of context bullcrap. So we have the Greek word 
Strong's G 3466 Mustadion. 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 Outline of biblical usage, hidden thing, secret, mystery, general generally mysteries, religious secrets confided only to the initiated and not to ordinary mortals. Now the reason why I said it that way is because I, we don't have a religion in the, in the worldly sense with all these worldly religions where, oh, I can start off here and convert to that. No, because you can't convert to being an Israelite. This is literally a heritage that goes, it's associated with a certain, a certain group of people since before the foundation of the earth. And when the Lord made their nation, when the Lord basically gave us fleshly bodies, now it's, it applies to everybody within this bloodline. All right. Confided only to the initiated and not to ordinary mortals. And two thirds of our own people are considered ordinary mortals in the eyes of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Our Lord Yahweh Shai just confirmed that with the precept I just read. A hidden thing or secret not obvious to the understanding. Right? Because it's easy to, it's easy for, uh, you know, just any of the brothers in the truth, it's easy for us to realize the Lord's not coming back to save all nations. But a dumbass two third nigga or nigga woman, John 3 16, John 3 16, John 3 16, John 3 16. And all you got to do is go to the blue letter. Everybody has a smartphone. If you get off of TikTok for two seconds, everybody got a smartphone. Just go to the blue letter, hit the word world and see what it means in Greek. Definition C says a hidden purpose or counsel. So this lets you know the Lord does not want you to even know the truth. So you on a real low level when you keep popping up in the comment section, talking all your bull crap. The northern kingdom ain't Israelites. Black only Israelite bullshit. Only God can judge man. God does judge man. How does he judge man? Using other men. All this Christian bullshit is a cancer, man. Secret will of men, of the Most High, the secret counsels which govern the Most High in dealing with the righteous, which are hidden from ungodly and wicked men, but plain to the ungodly. So there you go. Right there is why the true men of Yahweh Bash Me Shah don't give a damn about the two thirds, man. Because if you don't get this, it's it's it's, it's <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. As plain as day as the Lord is making it and crystal clear through his servants, the prophets. He's brought in brothers from all walks of life, so Jake would have no excuse. If you if someone speaks a certain way that you don't like, okay, he has brothers that are that are well spoken. If something sounds too uppity for you, okay, he has brothers that, that come from the hood that speak, you know, more hood vernacular. Whatever the case may be, the Lord is making it where there's no excuses. And the Lord even put the spirit on the brothers. Uh, in Holland, they, they, they're part of a deaf camp. So if anybody that's, uh, that's uh, I think, deaf, you know, you can you can hear the word and be saved if you be an Israelite. <sighs> but that's all I have in this epistle right here. Hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and Son of the begotten Son. Our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash, double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Akim of great millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear forbearance, sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elected the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bread among that number, which are the Hebrews of life foreigners scattered among the heathen that are like the heathen. Kwame Asherala and the Baba Ball. We almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah, and we got next Adawan Ratazah. Shema, Yasha Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad. Shabbat Shalom.